Hello, good people of the internet. What I hold in my hands here is my very own tour box. That's right, after telling you to build your own physical controller for Lightroom Classic, I went ahead and bought a very much not DIY solution. In fact, I bought this tour box sometime before Christmas as an online shop here in Switzerland was selling them off for about $50. The eagle-eyed among you will have noticed the tour box pop up here and there while watching any of my videos from the last couple of months. Obviously, I've not yet thrown it out of the window. Our or sold it, but that doesn't prove my unconditional love for it. The tour box has many issues, which, along with the positives of course, I will cover in this video, my tour box review. The tour box is a physical controller for creative applications such as Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, Photoshop and Lightroom Classic. It isn't meant to be an all-in-one solution and is best used in combination with a mouse or graphic tablet. It was launched on Kickstarter and other crowdfunding platforms and will currently cost you about $150 when not on offer. The tour box has been a mainstay on my desk because honestly I really like working with it. I couldn't tell you whether it actually speeds up my editing by a huge amount, but it definitely makes it much more enjoyable. Scrolling through the timeline in Premiere Pro just feels more natural using a rotary encoder and the buttons are all easily distinguishable and have a nice click to them. Once you get used to it, you're basically never going to look down at it while editing. What is also hugely beneficial is its size, especially when you've got a smaller desk such as mine. Compared to the loop deck, this tour box is tiny. Uh, you might make the argument that you could potentially edit only using a loop deck without any other accessories on your desk, but I do think most will use a mouse or a graphic tablet alongside it. What I'm trying to say is that the tour box doesn't have too few control options despite its comparatively tiny size. I also love the USB pass-through on the back of the tour box. What this means to me is that when I'm editing I can plug in my handy little numpad into the tour box and when I'm not editing I will stash the tour box into a desk drawer and only have the numpad out without having to mess about with any cables going to my laptop behind me. While we're talking about the outsides, despite being small the tour box has some heft to it. In my books, that's a positive. It won't slide around on your desk and it generally feels good in the hand. The outside is covered in this soft touch coating and it definitely feels better than hard plastic, but it is an absolute grease magnet. The feel of the device is more important to me, so I'm not going to count that against the tour box. For those of you who have ever held a Nexus 5 phone, it feels just like that. I had one and I love the feel of it. Speaking of controls, on this thing you will find a dial, a scroll wheel which you can also press, a knob, a side and top button, a short and tall button, two custom buttons, a four-way d-pad and an additional tour button. That's a lot of options. 11 in fact. There are 11 buttons on the tour box. And sadly, it is these that also bug me the most about the tour box. Yes, I did just praise the clickiness of the buttons not a minute ago, but the C1 and up button on the D-pad are almost flush with the casing. The tour button again could stand out just a little bit more. That's just a huge oversight on behalf of the manufacturer and even the revised version called the Tourbox Neo appears to have the same issue. I'll have a few words to say on the Neo later on. I don't know who thought that was a good idea. The rest of the buttons are fine and I won't know how to improve them any further. Perhaps one of the custom buttons could have a texture to it, but it's honestly not a huge problem. What is a problem is the thing staring right at you, the knob. The number one feature I was excited about is, there's no way of putting this, it's, it's bad, it's awful, I hate it. 
but I still use it. It's like using your phone on the bog. It's disgusting. We all know it. We know we shouldn't do it because its screen will be covered in a thin layer of by the time we hit the flush. But we still do it because what else are you supposed to do? My analogies have, have never been the best, to be honest. Now, I don't know if it's just my brain telling me that I ought to love using it because it does feel so natural, but at the same time, here, have, have a listen to and look at this. For comparison, this here is a really cheap Rotary encoder I bought for an electronics project. And here's my Behringer X-Touch Mini. How did the tour box end up with this? It just makes me sad. And no, this is not just about me wanting the knob to feel nice in my hands. It does have an actual influence on my editing experience. When attempting to cut a video at a certain point, it can be very difficult to ha hit the exact frame because there's just no resistance to it. Sometimes I'll end up skipping like 10 frames ahead and then I'll have to go back again and try to hit the exact point again and it'll skip again and so on and so on. There have been situations where I just had to say, sod it, I'm using the mouse and keyboard. The story isn't much different when you take a look at the scroll wheel. You might be asking yourself, what makes a good scroll wheel? And as someone who has a Logitech MX Master 3, I can tell you. It's when you can't get stuck between two scroll ratchet points. It's quite difficult to explain. It's when you either have scrolled or not. You can't get stuck on half a scroll. Well, on the tour box, you can. If you haven't tried it, it feels just like the scroll wheel on a cheap mouse you'd find in an office where normal office stuff is done. The dial, the dial is fine. I find it useful if you have to scroll or move somewhere quickly. It's effortless to spin quickly, yet it is still possible to have a certain amount of control over what you're doing. But again, it could be raised up just a little bit more. Onto the next bit that is again equally good and bad, the software. At first glance, it might look fine, except that it uses a non-standard design, which bugs me, but that's a personal thing. What I love about this software is that you can customize everything, literally everything. You've not just got the option of choosing functions and actions for the buttons, but you can assign them to double clicks and key combinations. By my count, there are about over 50 possibilities. By the way, if you want to know how I use the tour box, do get subscribed as I will have a video on that coming up shortly. In the tour box software, you can save any setup as a preset and easily switch between them. You can also have a preset automatically selected whenever you are in a certain application. Sadly though, you can't have presets per workspace in Premiere Pro. It's one preset per application. Another nice thing is that there are certain presets already added after installing the application and you can download further user submitted presets from the Toolbox website. And on the same site, you can obviously also upload yours. But, and as ever there is a but, you won't be having much fun if you use a keyboard layout that isn't Chinese, Japanese, Korean or English. I use a Swiss keyboard layout and basically had to edit the whole preset just to make it work. It very much wasn't a play and plug, plug and play experience for me. And there are a few further improvements they could make to the software that would make using the toolbox much easier. For example, there is no auto update function. Not just that, there is no update function at all. You literally have to go to the Toolbox website and check for yourself whether you are using the latest version or not. Have we not yet reached a point where all software should at the very least notify users about updates? And while we are talking about the updates, please give us more detailed change logs. I have also experienced the crash now and again, but they were only a few and far between. And it never took down my whole system uh, or Premiere Pro. It was just the software that stopped working and I could easily restart 
the application and continue working in a matter of seconds. I mentioned earlier that there is actually a successor to the Tourbox I've got here and it's called the Tourbox Neo. You won't be at fault to not know this because Tourbox is exceptionally bad at communication. Seriously, if anyone at Tourbox is watching this video, hit me up for some badly needed help. I'll be more than happy to test the Neo for you. Nowhere on the website does it actually say what the difference is between this and the Neo. I've had to dig through various reviews and product listings on Amazon and B&H Photo to find out. The Tourbox Neo seems to have a clickable knob and dial, which is good, but they've removed the USB pass-through for reasons. And I've not been able to find out whether the knob has been improved, which is all that interests me. So should you buy the Tourbox or not? That's a difficult question to answer and I don't think I'm in a position to do that for you. I bought one and I don't regret it. Despite not having the easiest software to use and me having to reconfigure many of the default options, it is easier than MIDI 2LR. And the Tourbox also isn't restricted to just Lightroom Classic. That's important to me because especially navigating the timeline in Premiere Pro feels much more natural with the Tourbox than it does with a mouse and keyboard. And I couldn't find a way of setting up my Behringer for the same task. But the Tourbox isn't perfect, not by a long shot and the software also has a bit of a learning curve to it. If the Tourbox Neo has an improved knob, I would recommend it without hesitation. But with this model, you just really have to want to use it. Let me know what you think of the Tourbox in the comments down below. And while you're down there, why not make a hairy boy happy and subscribe to the channel. As always, thank you for watching. If this video helped you out in any way, shape or form, please leave me a like as it does make a massive difference. If it didn't help you out, hit the dislike button twice to make it extra impactful. I've been Liam Alexander Coleman and this has been my review of the Tourbox. You have not been Liam Alexander Coleman, but I will see you in the next one. Bye!